Welcome to Get Your Goal with Paula B. I'm your host, Paula B. I'm a weight loss and menopause expert, certified life coach, and author of the book, Mind Over Menopause. On this podcast, we dive deep into the mindset tools and proven Get Your Goal formula that will help you lose weight for the last time. Are you ready to get your goal? Me too. Let's go. Hello, goal friend, and welcome to episode number 286. You guys, before we even dive in today, I just wanted to give you all a little bit of a life update. I feel like I haven't updated you in a bit. I'm recording this literally just a few days before you're going to hear it, if you're listening on the day it comes out. So this actually feels like a real conversation with my friend. Sometimes when I record the podcast super far in advance, which I usually do, I honestly don't even remember what I talked about by the time it comes out. And then you all leave comments and I'm like, "Mm mm-hmm, because it's been weeks for me since we talked about stuff. So I'm recording this the first week of May, which is when I do a monthly check-in on my goals by looking back at the tasks I accomplished in April to assess how things are going. And oh my goodness, y'all, April was a month in a really good way. And so I wanted to share with you a little bit about what I've been going through and why I'm, you know, for me, running late on the podcast. And then, of course, we're going to dive in to your top five weight loss questions, because this is going to be a really good one today. But so anyways, April was a really big month of personal growth for me, which means that I took some pretty exciting steps forward in my business. And if you are new around here, I am a weight loss coach and we do talk about weight loss and we're going to today, but we also talk about getting goals sort of in general. So over the years of recording the podcast, I've shared Uh, basically all of my personal and business goals here too. And so the business goal that I'm currently working on is creating a million dollar business. And as these words are coming out of my mouth, I can hear the chatter in my head about how I'm nowhere close to that number and it's a really lofty goal and how it still feels so far away and how I know that not everybody can relate, just like nonstop thoughts and justifications. And this is exactly why I love to talk about and share the behind the scenes of my goal journey, even though it's not weight loss, but so that I can normalize for you that everything you're going through, including the chatter about how big your goal is and how far away it still is, and of course you're not there yet, and all that nonsense, is exactly what all goal getters go through. It doesn't matter if you want to lose 50 pounds or make a million dollars or something in between. Like if you want to lose five pounds or have just even starting a business for yourself, there's always, always, always mindset work to be done. So here was mine. (laughs) I finished off the month of March, which was almost literally, not quite literally, but almost literally the last day of March, which is why I'm kind of including it in my April check-in. But I hosted my very first webinar, Why Weight Loss is Harder Over 50 and What to Do About It. It was so exciting. Beforehand, the tech felt like really scary and let's be honest, overwhelming, but it ended up all working out and I had a huge audience attending, like my biggest ever, which was amazing. And I had lots of great feedback about how helpful it was and how much people enjoyed it. It was great. So the replay is actually still available if you want to watch it. Um, You can go to getyourgoal.com slash webinar and check it out. And the reason I'm talking so slowly, there'll be a link in the show notes or the description box, of course, but that webinar is actually not going to be available forever. So if you're listening to this at some point in time in the future and that link doesn't work or it's a different webinar replay, this is why. That's um, It's kind of a generic page and I, I have plans for a future webinar. So if you're listening to this in the future, it might not be that exact webinar, but it'll be a different one and enjoy. But so anyways, that webinar experience was like all kinds of stepping in to a new version of me, like the life coach me who does things like host webinars while wearing a dress and a necklace and shoes. (laughs) And then I went almost directly from the webinar into recording my audiobook. Have I told you about that? I 
honestly cannot remember if I mentioned that on the podcast. I feel like I did. And I know for sure that I talked about it on Facebook and Instagram. And I know for sure that it went out in an email. But I have no idea if I talked about it here. So... So I'm telling you now, I recorded my audiobook. It'll come out the same time as the hardback version of Mind Over Menopause, which is on June 27th of this year, 2023. And I have confirmation from my publisher that it'll be available on audio, or excuse me, Audible for sure. Um, but I don't know yet if it'll be on Chirp or I don't know which other audiobook providers. Closer to publication, I'm sure I'll know all the details of where it'll be and whether or not you can pre-order the audio version, all that stuff. Believe me, I will tell you all about it. You will you will not lack for details. Um, you can order the hardback version. You can go to my website actually for that one too. Getyourgoal.com slash mind dash over dash menopause. If you just go to getyourgoal.com, there's a huge pink button at the top that says buy my book. It's really easy to spot. And of course, there'll be a link in the show notes. You can you can find the pre-order for the book uh, anywhere you follow me, like on Instagram, Facebook, all those things. Anyways, so that page on my website has links to all of the major retailers where you can pre-order, including, this is really exciting, bookshop.org, which supports local booksellers. So you can feel really good about the convenience of shopping online while also helping your local bookseller. So recording the audiobook was every bit as life-changing as hosting the webinar in terms of like personal growth and learning to see myself in a new way. And really specifically, the audio engineer complimented me numerous times during the work about how, or during the, during the week rather, of the work about how professional I am. And that word, professional, it has always been super sticky for me. It's just not how I have historically seen myself. I'm very loud. I'm rambly. Maybe you know, and I dress very casually. And if you're in the Get Your Goal group, you know that I swear a lot. And I've really, I mean, like I've only ever worked at a job that you might call a career in an office where I wore dresses and shoes for a very short time, a very long time ago, like before my oldest was born and he's about to turn 25. So I see myself or I used to see myself, this is a work in progress, this is a self-concept that is changing myself, or changing right now, I used to see myself as not being professional. But of course, in a very real sense, I also totally am. I mean, in addition to all the swearing and rambling, <laughs> I'm on time for things. I meet deadlines. Yes, I'm recording this podcast late, but it's gonna get to you on Sunday morning. I mean, that's not even a question. I don't cancel things at the last minute. I have reliably put out this podcast, for example, for nearly six years. I had content every single week without fail every every week of my career on YouTube I have constantly put out emails like I'm I'm really reliable with content so it's just really interesting to have had this thought I'm not professional in my head it felt super super true and I had all kinds of evidence in my brain for why it was true because I mean confirmation bias but also there's this mountain of evidence that I have in front of me that I am, of course, a professional. So imagine, fresh on the heels of both the webinar and the audiobook experience, where I'm exploring these self-concepts of like being a life coach and being professional, I then went and hosted an entire week of learning inside the Get Your Goal group called Weight Loss University, which I have mentioned a couple times here on the podcast for sure when I was preparing for it. But let me just tell you something. Weight Loss University was so good. Like, so good. And it's available for you. Like, the replays are in there. If you want to come join the Get Your Goal group, you have access to Weight Loss University. It is the work of my lifetime up until this point. Like, I can see how I could create something more and better, 
because I was able to create that. I basically took everything I know about weight loss and broke it down in a way that I've never fully explained in this exact way before. And I walked my Get Your Goalers through the whole weight loss journey from start until maintenance. I mean, I fully stepped into my expertise. I mean, I've been studying weight loss for over 10 years now and really paying attention to the things that seem to give women a lot of trouble that I work with. And the truth of it is, every problem, and I've known this for years, but every problem is always solvable. You are 100% capable of losing weight. And I literally have a completely doable, like three to seven step process to get you unstuck from everywhere. And for me, it was just a matter of getting those processes out of my brain and out of my mouth and onto paper and onto video in front of my Get Your Goalers. And now it's all right there. Like there's a process for like when you first decide to lose weight and everything feels confusing, there's a process to move forward. Or when you first start trying to do the tasks of like counting your calories or journaling and you can't seem to make them happen. Yeah, there's a process to pull yourself out of that. Or when you're spinning around in scale agony and like can't see the numbers as information, but really think that they mean something about you personally and your self-worth in the world. I have a process for that. Or this one's my favorite because this is <laughs> this is how I've been feeling for a while in my own business. Speaking of how getting your goal is always getting a goal. When you just feel stuck, stuck, stuckity stuck on some sort of a plateau. I have a process for that too. You guys, I have thought about the weight loss and the getting of any goal journey so deeply. I have literally helped thousands of women lose weight after menopause and get other goals. This is my life's work. This is my deep passion for helping. And during the month of April, I owned it for the first real time in my brain and in my body. I am an expert professional life coach. I help women lose weight, and change their lives. So my friend, are you ready to lose weight and change your life? Because here's the thing about today's topics. They are all going to sound like very practical questions. Like when you ask them of me, you truly believe that you are simply missing some piece of information. But what's really going on is that there's a mindset shift that you can make that will actually make all the difference in the world. Question number one. You ready? Let's go. Here we go. Question number one is which calorie app is the best? I hear this one all the time and I totally get it. I mean, there are literally hundreds of apps to choose from. And even though they're all the same, they're all just a little bit different too. So if you download like three or four of them and put in your information, like your height, your weight, your age, and your goal weight, they'll give you very different calorie targets. And Beyond that, if you start inputting the foods you eat, when you start searching for a particular food, there will actually be a variety of calorie counts too. So I get asked a lot about which one is the best because it kind of seems like they might be inaccurate or like one of them or all of them might be wrong. And then you start wondering like, how can you lose weight if the numbers are off? Or, you know, if you're trying to hit your calorie target on the money, but now you don't even know for sure what your target is. And maybe you'll never know. And around and around we go, you know? So of course you must just be missing some piece of information that an expert like me would know, right? Or... Let's consider this from a mindset angle. With my students in the Get Your Goal group, there are three questions that I ask almost every time we coach that can really help you get to the heart of what's going on with your allegedly practical question. Question number one, coaching question number one is, how do you feel when you say fill in the blank, whatever the underlying problem is. I ask this question so we can determine whether or not your current thought is helpful in getting you to your goal. And I know that what you're asking is a question, but behind every question is a, a thought 
that is bringing up that question for you. So we change your question to me into a thought. And then we get to use the two-step tool where we find your thoughts and decide if they're helpful. And the criteria for a helpful thought is that it feels good, like in your body, whereas an unhelpful thought feels bad or uncomfortable in your body. I want to clarify here really quickly that very often, and in fact, even in older podcasts, I offered you that you could simply think more about the thought. And I want to be really clear that the way you know whether or not a thought is helpful is how it feels. Not your thoughts about the thought, but your actual feeling that the thought creates. We're going to get into this a little bit more, but I just wanted to clarify it right up front. So coaching question number two is how do you want to feel about this issue? which lots of us have never even considered before. We often just think that we have to feel whatever it is that we already do, but you have a choice. So I often ask, and I'm going to tell you to ask yourself, how do you want to feel about this issue? And then coaching question number three is with that feeling in mind, what do you want to do? What, for example, in this one, we're going to get to this, but what app do you want to pick? So Let's go ahead and like, let's get started with the coaching question. Number one, how do you feel when you say, I don't know which calorie app to choose? Because that's the underlying issue here. You think you're asking me, but you're asking me because you're telling yourself, I don't know. So answer that. How do you feel when you say that? Sink into your body for a second and see what it feels like. For me, the thought, I don't know which calorie app to choose, feels helpless. For you, and I mean, let's be really clear, that your thoughts create your own personal feelings. You don't have to simply adopt mine. I Helpless is a go-to for me, so that's why that one was very easily accessible. But you might feel frustrated or powerless or confused or overwhelmed or resigned or defeated. The feeling that that thought creates is completely up to you and your experience in life. So honestly, even the ones that I've listed here, they might not resonate with you. But what I want you to notice, no matter what the feeling is, it's not good. Like, did you notice that right away? It's tight in your shoulders or your jaw, or you might have like a churning in your stomach or a deep heaviness in your chest. That feeling is all the information you need to recognize this as an unhelpful thought. The thought, I don't know which calorie app to choose, is not going to take you to your goal. So here comes the next coaching question. How do you want to feel about choosing a calorie app. Like if you could have any feeling in the world in order to make this decision for yourself, what would it be? My guess is that you'd like to feel certain or confident or at the very least decisive. I believe that you'd like to take this decision off your plate and get moving forward, right? Okay, so now I'll remind you that your feelings never, ever, ever come from a thing. Your feelings are always created by your thoughts. And this is where I'm going to refer you to the episode of the podcast called The Wheel, which you can also find on my website, getyourgoal.com slash podcasts, plural, slash the dash wheel. And of course, there's going to be a link in the show notes or description box. You don't have to memorize these or type them all in. So knowing what you want to feel, confidence or certainty or decisiveness, and knowing that those feelings don't come from the calorie counting app at all, but instead they come from you and your thoughts, you can simply make a decision. And then that's the third question, the third coaching question. With that feeling in mind, what do you want to do? 
Now here's the biological truth of the matter. All of the apps are more or less accurate. There's actually no other, or there's really no way to know for sure how many calories are in a very specific food or how many calories your body is actually taking in from that food because I don't know if you know this, but every individual body is different. And your specific body might vary by up to 25% of the amount of calories that you actually get from a food versus somebody else because of the microbiota that live in your gut. You are legitimately a special snowflake, my friend. So, so here's the mindset shift. You can literally do anything. You're not helpless and there's no way to get it wrong because you're just going to have to gather information from your body over time to get the real answer. There's no other like standard answer out there in the world. You can just pick. <laughs> it's amazing, right? So personally, I like to use a pen and paper. I know that that is super old fashioned, but honestly, in so many ways, so am I. I knowing that my success or failure doesn't depend on the mechanism by which I'm recording calories, I choose to do the thing that I feel confident with. And for me, that's physical handwriting. But for you, it might be something different. What do you want to do? going to leave you with that. Top five weight loss questions. Number two is, has anybody lost weight eating this amount of calories? We get this one a lot in the Beehive, which is my free Facebook group. When you first get started with the 5-0 method, which is my free weight loss program for women over 50, you might be shocked at how high your calorie target is. And this is super, super common. It's a topic for another day as to why this number is actually very accurate, like biologically for most women, and why the goal of weight loss isn't to eat as little as possible, but to actually eat as much as possible while still losing weight. But we have been told otherwise our entire lives. I, I have an entire rant about that, but that is not this podcast. So let's move on. You ask this question because, again, it sort of feels like you're just missing a piece of information, right? Like you'd like some proof of concept. And I get it, but also, let's go ahead and go over our coaching questions again. How do you feel when you tell yourself, I don't think anybody can lose weight eating this much? How does that thought feel in your body? For me, this thought creates a feeling of doubt or skepticism. And let's be really clear that I don't feel the doubt or the skepticism because of the program or the number of calories. Remember, you have a thought that creates your feelings. And especially, I mean, for me here, <laughs> I created the program and I have years of proof that your number will work. But that thought, even when I think it, creates a feeling of doubt or skepticism in my body. The doubt or skepticism doesn't come from the program. I promise. Results come from the program. But anyways, for me, doubt or skepticism doesn't feel good in my body. It's almost like itchy or jittery. I would very much like to get away from it. And that feeling inside your body is how you know that this thought is un helpful. So coaching question number two, how do you want to feel about your calorie target? My guess here is that you'd like to feel comfortable, like both physically comfortable and emotionally comfortable. You don't want to be stuffed or restricted and you want the number to feel like it's just right. Knowing that you with your thoughts create your feelings Coaching question number three, what do you want to do to feel comfortable? Biologically speaking, the main driver of weight loss is A, believing that you can, and B, eating in a consistent, slight caloric deficit over time. The key words here are belief and consistent. So here's the mindset shift. Your scientifically best bet is to eat whatever number of calories you feel super confident about hitting every single day. And maybe that's the number that the 5-0 method gives you, but maybe it's more or maybe it's less. 
kind of like the calorie app, the only way to really know what's actually going to work for you is to give your decision the full weight of trying it for a good four to six weeks and just see how your body responds. There's no doubt that your body will give you the information about your choice. I mean, in the form of losing weight or not losing weight, especially if you are doing all five parts of the 5-0 method. Just quick caveat here. It's not only calories, y'all. It's all five things. Anyways, you can just pick a number. For me, I actually really like the, the number that the calculator gives me. It's enough food without being too much, and I know that I can hit the target every day without struggling. It's part of why we have the rule of thumb that we have about adding a zero to your weight. It works, and for many women, not all, it's okay if that doesn't work for you, but for many women, it works right out of the box. So here's the question. What do you want to do? Top five weight loss questions. Number three is, is it okay to count coffee or tea in my water target or does it have to be only water? And this one is a question that I feel deep in my bones because at the root of this one is a deep desire to do things right, to follow the rules. There's also possibly a fear of doing it wrong, like with the consequence of not losing weight or gaining weight or somebody being mad or, you know, all those vague worries that we have about being wrong, getting it wrong. So what you're seeking here is some sort of reassurance that there is a rule and that you know how to follow it so that everything can turn out okay, right? But how does it feel when you tell yourself, I don't know if I'm doing it right? Ugh, right? <laughs> For me, the feeling that this thought creates is powerlessness. Like pretty similar to our first thought, which was also an I don't know statement. Side note, I've noticed in my own life that whenever my brain offers me an I don't know or I don't know how thought, which I, once you become aware of them, if you are anything like me, you are going to hear these thoughts all the time and they always feel bad. So they're always unhelpful thoughts. For you personally, because it's you, it's your body, it's your experience, it's your thought, it's your feeling, I don't know if I'm doing it right, might create a feeling like helplessness or powerlessness, but it might also create something like resignation, or defeat, or something else. You tune into your body and notice it's probably not a good feeling, not a comfortable feeling, which means that this is not a helpful thought for you. So we move on to the second coaching question. What do you want to feel about counting your coffee? Do you want to feel sure or certain or resolved? I'll make a suggestion that a great feeling to have here is actually open or curious. Because the truth of it is that yes, you can absolutely count anything liquid in your daily water target. And some people's bodies do great with watery foods like soups or grapes or uh, watermelon and all sorts of beverages, sodas, water, coffee, tea, everything. And by the way, the way that you know that your body is doing great with your hydration is that your digestion is regular and let's call it non-problematic in terms of like bloating or gas or other discomfort. Good hydration will also show up in the form of mood regulation, soft skin, soft hair, soft lips. You won't have to use chapstick anymore and you won't be dizzy when you stand up quickly. Did you know that that was dehydration? It is. Anyways, yes, over time you will also lose weight if you're well hydrated along with the other four things that we do in the 5-0 method, but those really specific things are how you know that your personal hydration is working for you. And here's the thing. On the other hand, the other hand of some people's bodies do great with all kinds of watery foods. The other hand of that is that some people, and I am one of them, literally can't count anything else is water except water and still feel hydrated and get all the benefits of weight loss and skin and moods and such. So 
This is why my rule in the 5-0 method is so firm with you are only counting water because I personally prefer to be kind of dogmatic about my water intake because I really feel like my personal body works better. And as I mentioned, I really enjoy following a rule. <laughs> so, so here's the mindset shift for you though. You aren't powerless with this. Yes, there is, you know, quote unquote, a rule, but you have the power to create your own rule and then pay attention to how your body feels and notice the results that you are getting from your rule. There really isn't truly a wrong answer here. It's, it's not a hard and fast biological rule like every single body needs exactly this. You get to pick so, coaching question number three, what do you want to do? Do you want to count or do you not want to count? It's 100% your choice. All right, we've made it to top five weight loss question number four. Yes, I'm singing, <laughs> which is, can I go for a walk also or do yoga or do gardening or some other, other activity? What is moderate? I know when you first read the 5-0 method and I tell you how little you're going to be exercising with this weight loss program, some people kind of freak out. For those of us who are used to being very active, it can be really tough to feel like we're cutting back. But let's notice that the crux of this question, again, is this idea that you think you are missing information or need clarification or you think you don't know how to figure it out. How do you feel when you think the thought, I don't understand what moderate means? For me, this sentence, this thought, creates a feeling of being flummoxed. I love that word. <laughs> However, it is not an especially nice feeling inside my body. It feels very heavy, very stuck, very unable to move forward. And that is a bad feeling, which means that this thought, I don't understand what moderate means, is unhelpful. It's not going to help you get to your goal. So what do you suppose you want to feel about figuring out what moderate is for you? That's coaching question number two, by the way. For me, this one was actually really easy. I want to feel pleasant, enjoyable, and nice. Even though my sixth grade teacher, Mrs. Pont, <laughs> told me in no uncertain terms that nice is not a compliment and should be avoided in anything that would be considered good writing, I actually really think it fits here. I'm not looking to feel amazing. To me, feeling amazing or hardcore or really fantastic, those, those are all like big words that I actually really associate with pushing myself in a workout which I've done to my detriment. That's how I gained my menopausal weight. So I personally am intentionally looking for a sort of bland, mild feeling when it comes to exercise. And in particular, when I'm figuring out what moderate is so that I'm not going over the top. I actually want a moderate feeling. So biologically speaking, the word moderate, especially the way I use it to describe the exercise component of the 5-0 method, can be really variable between one person and the next. Like your personal unicorn of a body has its own version of moderate that's based on a lot of individual factors, not the least of which is how you're fueling, whether or not you are you know, sleeping enough, whether or not you are hydrated enough, whether or not you are managing stress in other areas of your life. Like when you've got all your plates spinning, your moderate looks different than somebody else's moderate. And so the definition that I like to use is that if you can do exactly what you're doing today with the same intensity and duration every single day for the rest of your life, then what you're doing is moderate. And anything that feels like a push or a lot or that was amazing or fabulous or I worked really hard is probably too much. And 
the thing is that from my own personal experience, I truly believe that the only way to figure out what's moderate for you is to go over it and feel the effects afterwards. Like being sore and feeling all the inflammation and getting burnt out and on the edge of never wanting to exercise ever again for the rest of your life or not having enough energy for the rest of your day. And I mean, the obvious not losing weight or possibly even gaining weight. Those are all signs that you can point to that show you that you've gone past moderate. Now you know, especially for those of us who really want to tiptoe right up to the edge of it. I want to know where that line is. And so sometimes I go over to remind myself where it was. So knowing that you don't feel flummoxed because of your activities or from a lack of knowledge, but instead because of your thoughts, here is the mindset shift. You get to define moderate for yourself. Doesn't that actually feel amazing? Because <laughs> it means, I mean, for me, it means that I can go out and accidentally do too much <laughs> and then figure it out from there. <laughs> the thing is that you can simply decide what you want to do and what feels moderate to you. You guys, We've made it all the way to top five weight loss question number five. And this is a really good one. How do I eat all those calories without eating junk food? When you ask this question, you really think that you are just looking for suggestions. Like there's some other healthy food or low calorie option out there that you just haven't thought of yet. Oh, but of course you already know that there's going to be a mindset shift here for you. So let's ask, how do you feel when you think the thought, I can't eat junk food or I won't lose weight? Oh, did that one just go straight to the feeling of restriction for you too? I mean, like, my chest is tight. My jaw is tight. I feel caged in. It is definitely not a good feeling. So this is definitely an unhelpful thought. What do you want to think about eating junk food? This is coaching question number two for you. This one's kind of tricky, right? Like you think you have to feel bad about junk food because I mean, it's junk food. It's right there in the title. <laughs> it's bad for you. You won't lose weight if you're eating it, right? So it's super important to like keep yourself on the straight and narrow. And yet everything I have ever taught you about the wheel and how our brains work says otherwise. Remember that it's good feelings that move you closer to your goal. And yes, what I'm saying here is that you can feel good about eating junk food. For me, the feeling that I love to have here is self-assurance, as in, I am sure of myself that I make good food decisions overall. I am sure of myself that I can find a balance that feels good to me between junk and healthy stuff. Biologically speaking, weight loss is driven by eating in a slight caloric deficit over time without regard to the quality of those calories. Hear me out, keep listening, because I know you're arguing with me in your head. <laughs> Of course, you're going to feel better and stay fuller longer and have more energy if most of those calories are coming from healthy foods. Yes, but that does not ever, ever mean that you can't eat junk food. Unraveling your thoughts and feelings about what you're eating and moving towards simply calculating how much you're eating is a huge mindset shift for most of us. Honestly, pulling off that layer of judgment that you've put on yourself about the foods that you are eating, it will change. God, honestly, it'll change almost everything for you. When you are not telling yourself that you can't eat certain types of foods, you will actually make beautiful and loving decisions for yourself and your body 
that includes both healthy and not so healthy foods that you simply enjoy eating for a variety of emotional reasons. And this is why I offer you in the 5 method the simple rule of thumb that you can eat anything you want in portion sizes that make sense for your goals. We actually had a really good and very thorough conversation about this a couple of weeks ago on the episode, What to Eat for Weight Loss. Um, There's a link in the show notes. Like always, um, it's getyourgoal.com slash podcasts, plural, uh, slash 282-eat-dash for like F-O-R, dash weight, dash loss. There'll be a link. It's much easier than trying to type that out. But here's the thing. This leads us beautifully to our final self-coaching question. What do you want to do? What do you want to eat? Like really want to eat and how much and how often? My friend, my friend. Oh my gosh, there was so much good stuff on this episode. Like this... These mindset shifts can really turn around how you are thinking about your weight loss journey. And let me be really clear. I probably should have said this right at the top of the episode. There's nothing wrong ever. There's nothing wrong with asking these questions. I expect you to answer these or to ask me these questions. It's completely okay to be exactly where you are and to take in this information and these mindset shifts that I have just offered you so that you can empower yourself with your own really insightful questions that will move you forward with loving decisions that feel amazing instead of helpless or powerless or restricted or confused. You guys, thank you so, so much for listening. Have a fabulous week and I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for listening. Be sure to leave a rating and review so other women of a certain age can stop struggling with the scale and start loving their menopausal bodies. And if you're ready to change your mindset while you're changing your weight, then it's time to get into the Get Your Goal Mastermind group, where you'll find my proven success formula, answers to your questions, expert coaching, and the community support you've been looking for. You don't need to lose weight alone when you can have fun and level up your mindset with friends. With weekly coaching, coaching calls, live journaling classes, and access to the tools and strategies I've used to help thousands of women lose weight for the last time, the Get Your Goal group is the place for you to get your goal. Learn more about group membership at www.getyourgoal.com, and I'll see you inside the group.